Hello everybody, welcome to another Lion's Table. Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let God's word, which is truth, fill us and give us strength. Let us contemplate his great love for us, his sacrifice on the cross, his mercy, his grace and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The word who was at the beginning was with God and is God. It's the goodness of God that turns man to repentance. We don't repent because we recognize, acknowledge God, even Satan knows God. We are drawn to repent because we are in awe of him and his goodness. And it's his goodness that is running after you. Amen. In Romans 2, 4, we joyfully read, Don't you see how wonderfully kind and tolerant and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? <laughs> Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? His goodness draws you to repent. How great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have bestowed upon before the sons of men on those who take refuge in you. Psalm 31, 19. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, verse 6. Amen. And I can't say it enough. His goodness is running after you. And just read that again. Psalm 23, 6. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord. Take notice, therefore, of the kindness and the severity of God. Severity to those who fell, but kindness to you, if you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you will be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Hallelujah. Romans eleven twenty two through 23. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his loving devotion endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. Psalm 100 verses 3 through 5. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. Psalm 28, 7. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. Psalm 30, verse 4. Dear brothers and sisters, faith is the key word in all of God's word, in all his truth, faithful. Jesus asked, will I find faith? When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Luke 18, verse 8. And that's the question. We have read so many scriptures that tell us how important faith is. The last was the story of the centurion who said to Jesus, Your word is enough. Only say the word and my servant shall be healed. And in this you and we greatly rejoice, although now for a little while you and us may had to suffer grief and various trials so that the proven character of our faith is more precious than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire. We rejoice in that such may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of, him, of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an inexpressible and glorious joy. 1 Peter 1, verses 6 through 8. Isn't that amazing how our faith is more precious than gold? Indeed, folks. Therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. Romans 4, 16. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. And that's from Acts 3, verse 16. Ephesians 2, 8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. And you know, <clears throat> a lot of people can get caught up in that Ephesians 2, 8. When they hear it's by grace you've been saved through faith. But then we can read in James when it says, Faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. James 2, 17. And here is the answer to that, folks. 
But that does not mean we want to dominate you by telling you how to put your faith into practice. We want to work together with you so you will be full of joy for it is by your own faith that you stand firm. 2 Corinthians 1, 24. Wean yourself off of earthly pleasures. Lean not on your own understanding. Have faith, brothers and sisters. Do not put your trust in mortal man who cannot save. Psalm 146, verse 3. What we should have when Christ returns is the same faith as the centurion. He knew that the word of the Lord was final and he could rely on it. And that is the faith he's looking for. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us on this Lions Table. We hope it's been a blessing to you. And as always, we invite you to join us again next time.